Welcome to I Love Stocks and today I'm going to be talking about the cannabis sector into 2021 and also we are affiliates with TrendSpider and I'll be using their chart uh, platform today discussing the stocks. So please if you like and you're interested in their website and their, their product and it's great for beginners, I use it quite a bit and go ahead and sign up with our link right here and it'll be posted below. In the com down below the comment section or the content section so let's get started and let's look at some stocks I've got set up already to where I'm kind of looking at two months since we've had the big run and the first one on top of my list is GWPH I would definitely be watching this into 2021 now I kind of be showing you some of the stuff that I use on this uh, trend spider and right now I'll be using the trend lines so I'm going to be trying to find some supports and places to break out. I'd like to see this support hold right here, and that's right around the 115, let me see, 115.30 area. And then I'd like to see the resistance to break right here, right around the 123.46. This is GW, GWPH. And we're going to go ahead and draw that trend line right in here. Bring it out a little bit farther. Thing right around that 2330 area then in between here we have a little pivot point and I'm thinking it's going to be right in here at 119.17 so that's what we got to break if we can break that 119.17 we'll get it up here to 123.30 I'd like to see that 115.29 hold they have it set up where you can have a little watch list on the side here and you can go to many watch lists Plus, you can go to their personal scans they also have on here, and you can watch them. But for right now, we're just going to stick right in here with this. The next one we're going to look at is Cureleaf, C-U-R-L-F. The same kind of time frame. It's on the hour, as you can see right here. They do have an automatic Fibonacci setup, and they do have a place where you can kind of set up your own little Fibonacci on this one here. So if I was to set this up, Oh, I'd say it'd probably come right about down into here. That low support, you can see we're not going to be hitting that. This one here has been a very bullish trade. We're going to go ahead and delete this, and I'm going to try to find some support levels. Remove the Fibonacci, and we're just going to try to draw lines where I think the resistance and the support is. We did have a big old pullback on this, and it found an equilibrium in the channel, which was about right here at the old resistance. So let's go ahead and set us a little trend line in here. We got a low support right down here, right around the 11, 12 buck area. So we're going to go ahead and draw that in. That needs to hold. And then you got a resistance to break, and that's going to be right up in here, right around the $13 area. Right now we're about midpoint on the chart. And let me put this trend line right up in here, right around the $13 area. Then you got a little pivot point area, which is going to be right in here, where we had that previous high, and that's going to be right there, right around the 1251. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Kind of looks to me like a pennant flag, but we just had a hard sell-off right here, and it's kind of held support right here at this level. So this is going to be your first support right here, right around the 1230. Let me go ahead and draw that in. And then resistance to break is going to be right in here. I'm going to kind of color that in. We'll just color it in right here. I'm thinking probably, you know, somewhere in this so we got a little support right here at 12 bucks we got a 12 
about a 12.30 area for your second support. The pivot point in this channel is going to be right here at 12.51, 12.65, and then $13. And that's C-U-R-L-F. I like this trade a lot. It's one of my bullish trades of the year. VFF, another one that's had a nice little breakout here last week. She's kind of had a pretty nice little bounce up. If I'm going to be looking for a support area, it's going to be probably right down here, right around the 1093. We're at 12 right now. So we're going to go ahead and draw that 1093 area down. I'm thinking probably right around this spot. I'm going to raise it up due to these candles right here, right around 11 bucks. We've got a resistance to break right here, right around the 1237 area. That's where the top of that body of that candle is. Then we have a little pivot point area, support level, probably your next, your first support right here at 1166. I'm looking at the bodies of the candle on the one hour chart, on the one hour, one hour candle right there. And then we got another one right up here where she kind of closed at. I kind of like that spot to break resistance come Monday. That's right at 12 bucks. So we have a low support down here at 11. With that first one being right here at 1166, I'd like to see, well, I'm going to draw another one right in here. I'm seeing a little bit of action. A little bit of action right in here on this candle. You can move it around, your chart bigger and smaller just by doing that. Hitting the, so we're going to probably put this right in here. Yeah, I like that right there, 11, 1136. Then we're going to have a re and that's about where we're going to call it. So we got 1104, 1136, and 1166 for your three supports. If it does to pull back, we're going to have to try to break resistance of 1237 and maybe bring it up here right around $13. So that's going to be VFF, bullish on this trade. Volume really started to spike. Here in the last week, as you can see, the spike, I'm liking it. Let's go ahead and go to the next one, Tilray. Tilray's got that merger, pulled back on, ran up on the news and pulled back. We kind of have an equilibrium right in here. I'm thinking, oh, support, you see right here where this high was, and we've kind of mitched down to that, so that's going to be a very solid support level. And we're going to fine tune it right here at 835. Then you'll have another one that's lower. That's going to be the beginning of the breakout, just in case it decides to pull back a little bit. And that's going to be right down here at the 787 area. Whoa, that ain't right. Let's remove this. There we go. That's better. 787. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw another resistant, a uh, little pivot point area. In the channel right here and that's going to be the resistance to break and that's going to be 869 to get this thing bullish again and then we're going to go ahead and draw another one on up here to the next resistance level and i'm seeing this spot right in here at 895 kind of like that 895 area right there i'm just drawing trend lines this is my extended trend line pattern that i use people that uh, follow me and know how I trade. I've been doing this for about 15 years, finding these trend lines. So we got a pivot point in the channel. We want to start bringing this back up. It can pull back. And then I'm going to put another trend line right in here for the, this probably the second support level. And I'll show you what I'm basing this off of. Basing it off this candlestick right in here and how it lines up. So we've got Three supports, 878, 817, and 787, excuse me, 817 and 835 with a pivot point in the channel right here at 869, which needs to break for resistance. Then we can run it. Ooh, that I didn't know I could do. That I didn't know I could do. So we're going to put that right back in there. Leave that there. So we got 895 and then 925. Learn something new every time. And this is going to be T L R Y. The next one we're going to look about is Hexo. Hexo's also had a little pullback. 
right into the main pivot point area, actually below the pivot point. I'm saying the pivot point's probably right around in here. We're going to go ahead and draw a line. We're going to figure this out. We'll pivot point between this and this. So we're going to draw a trend line right here. This is going to be on the one hour chart. That's what I'm judging this off of. Put one right there. And we're going to put another one right in here. So this is kind of like going to be like the pivot point area to break. We're going to call them resistance levels right now at 420 to 428. Support level, no lower than this item right down here. And that lower support is going to be right there at, at 382. I'd like to see that hold. And then your first support is going to be right here. And I'm going to be calling it right off these candles right in here. So we're going to draw this out a little bit. And it's going to be right here at 392.94. With it right now, we're kind of equilibrium in this channel, and that support level and that pivot point is going to be right there. You see where we had these two highs right here? I could have pulled that back just a little bit, maybe to right around four bucks. So anywhere between 403 and uh, 406 is the pivot point. And then the long resistance to break is going to be this candle right up in here. And if we can get past 440, we'll take her to new highs. And that's going to be Hexo. Pullback, low support, 382, 392, with a pivot point area right in here. I would say probably at 407, 406 area, 403. And then we got the three resistances of 420, 428, and 440. And if we get past 440, we definitely can get it up here to the high, and that ain't you know that 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 can happen. That can happen pretty easily at 447. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be CCHWF. This has had a wonderful run, a wonderful run. It's probably running up on news. We're going to go ahead and look at a different chart on this one here just for a second. I'm going to pull this up to the daily. I'm going to go back here quite a bit and see if we got some resistance levels that we can break we sure do and that's back in this area right in here so we've got another resistance right here right around the 609 I'm gonna start drawing some of these trend lines in here I'm gonna be watching this real well come Monday and that's CCHWF it'll be one of my top watches just by looking at the chart so we've got 612 we got a break and then we're gonna have another one right up in here right around the 6 right there 659 and then long come Monday I'm thinking right up here right around the seven dollar area so we're gonna be looking I'm looking at the daily right now as you notice I put it in a daily time frame we've got a support level right here off this channel off this support at 531 so that's gonna be your first support and then we're gonna to try to find another one right in here and that should go no lower than this Maybe that right here, right around five bucks. So let's go ahead and call this trade out. I think if we hold the five dollar area, we can retrace back up. We're right now in kind of an equilibrium pivot point where she closed at at five seventy six. So your first support's going to be right there around five thirty one with the resistance to break six twelve, six sixty, and then seven dollars. Going to keep a good eye on this one, CCHWF. The next one is GTBIF. Most of these are American stocks, American cannabis stocks, and they're the ones that you need to be watching into 2021 with all the mergers that are going to be coming up. So let's draw, let's go back to that. We've had some new highs. I just want to go back and look at that yearly daily again. It's definitely a yearly high. This is like two year high back here. And we've got a resistance level of maybe getting it up here to right around the 24 something. I'm using the candlestick wicks for resistance levels. And we're going to say, oh, right around the $25 area. Support. Now, this is going to be on a two year. And I'm thinking right down here at no lower than 1927. That's pretty, pretty, pretty low. But that's where we're going to go ahead and place this right now. Right there. 
I'm going to go ahead and put that 19, well, actually, bring it up to around 1985. Look for an equilibrium right in here. It's going to be right, and this is on the daily. And then we're going to draw another one right here. So we got a resistance level. I'm going to say a hard support. Let's bring this up to the... I want to do one more thing here. Bring it back to the hour. Yeah, that's beautiful. See how that hour chart turns out? Now we're going to try to find a couple more resistance levels in here. Support levels. I'm not seeing one right here from this previous high that we had. I'm at 2134 area. And then right down in here where we had some consolidated area where it kind of consolidated and had some highs. We'll go ahead and put that right in there. And then we're going to go ahead and bring this on up here. One more, and I think we got it. Liking it, liking it. Okay, let's go back to that daily. So we got the next resistance right here at $25, and this is stock number GTBIF. With a, um, I like to see the support level hold right here at 23.52 and 21.88. Now, if we're going to go ahead and fine-tune this down to the one hour, it gives a little bit different look at the chart. And that's going to give you your little, your lower support right here at 2188, 2263, and 2352 with a long of $25. And that's going to be GTBIF to break. I really like this trade. Keep a good eye on it. TCN. TCNNF is another juicy one. We did have resistance high up here right around the $33 area. So that's what we're going to call resistance to break. Right there at $33.45. I love how this has kind of moved up. You see how that's held support pretty well. We can find that out by going down here. Well, I think it's probably right about in there. Kind of held pretty well. You got pull back here, pull back here, pull backs here. Pretty solid support. And that's going to be right down here at this channel right there. So we're going to go ahead and draw that in. That's going to be your low support right there at $31. I'd like to see that hold. If not, we'll pull back to this other channel down here. That'll break the trend. See, we're getting starting to tighten up on that trend right there. And we'll just go ahead and bring this out a little bit farther. Right about there. I'm liking that. We're going to go out a couple more trend lines in here. Resistance to break is going to be this 32.31. Right there around 32.27 area. With a solid hard resistance to break. If we can get up to this upper channel. And that's going to be right there. Kind of, kind of a cool little chart right here. It kind of tells me that maybe we could have a little bitty pullback and a retracement back up. So we've got a strong buy at $30 with your first support running into this trend line here at $31, $31.62. And then resistance levels to break, $33.27. Maybe this, yeah, let's go ahead and draw that in. Right here at 3260, 3270, 33, and then 3345. And this is going to be ticker C, T, C, N, N, F. There's another one that I like to watch. This is C, R, L, B, F. Looking pretty good. We've kind of held, had some pull back a little bit, and she's held support pretty well right here at the 969 level. 
So we got a low support right down here at 944. I'm going off the two, this consolidated area where we had the big breakout. Then we had the three white soldiers. They're right in here. If you don't know what three white soldiers are, they're one, two, three. We're going to go ahead and draw a trend line in between each one of those soldiers. That's on the hour. That's 960. That's what I'm basing my support levels on. Pretty good consolidated support level if you're looking at the three white soldiers. This is actually a pretty bullish one because usually when you have these, they like to pull back a little bit and then bounce up. This one held pretty well and then had the nice little breakout. So this kind of reminds me that, that we're, we're going to be bullish on this trade. And this is CRLBF. The next trend line, see I don't want to go up that high, so we'll just go ahead and make it right in here for the resistance level. Of, if we can break past 1012, we'll get it up to higher highs. 1030. And then we've got a resistance level to break right here at 1045 and then long for the double top. And that's going to be that's going to be very bullish if we can get up to 1075. Three supports, 944, 960, and 980. Resistance levels, 1012, 1029, and 1045. And then if we can go long, 1075. CRLBF, I'd be keeping a good eye on this. This could probably... Um, start to squeeze and move on up but it's not as bullish as the other ones we had mentioned this one here is one we really like a lot it's called PLNNF it had some good earnings they're definitely growing and this is going down in based down in Arizona down in Vegas and I think uh, when the virus starts to clean up the sales are going to be twice as good and they're good right now they're going to be three times as better so you can get in at a good spot on this one and hold it long. You'll be doing real well. And I think support level for a strong buy is no lower than this 521. That's where I'd want to get into the trade. I like to see this 568 hold. We've got a little support level right here at 558. Then we definitely got this other one right in here at 568 with a resistance level of, of well, I don't want to leave. It's kind of choppy. But I'm going to count this as a, as a little resistance to break. This candle right in here. And we're going to go ahead and draw that in. You know, I've been using these extended trend lines forever. I can go back years and still use the same ones. And still play off of them. And I might be using it, but we don't want this thing. We want this sector to really start to move into 2021. There will be a lot of mergers and stuff, so you got to really start doing your homework to stay in the game. So we got three support levels. We got a str Ooh, I got something else that I missed right in here. Bam! I want to make sure that I get this area right in here because this is kind of a pattern that I like to see. And we had that big engulfing candle. So we got three support levels to hold. I'd like to see if it goes back to 538, that'll be good. Strong buy at 521. We got 568 for your first support. Resistance to break is going to be right around the 594 area to 610, 622, and, and try to break hard resistance at 636. PLNHF, I'm definitely bullish on to, into 2021. We got a little penny stock here that's had a nice little breakout, pulled back. I mean, a beautiful breakout. So she had to have like a 50% retracement on that breakout. And that, you know, I take it from that wick up there and maybe pull it back to right about in, in here. So we did have that little 50% retracement or that retracement that I like right in here in the green channel. And I think if we break resistance levels, it's going to be right here at 786 or 7... I mean, Right here, right around 172. That's going to be your resistance to break for a double top break at 188. Lower support right here at 143. And then I kind of like this area right in here. 
to hold. That's going to be the pivot point in the channel right in here at 152. Three support levels, and ooh, I got, I got to see. See, we've had some resistance levels right in here. You got to kind of just not go off the fibs. You got to kind of look around and try to find a support level too. So I got three supports: 137, 143, and 152. 153 to hold, resistance to break. 172 up to 188, and then we try to break that resistance level. And this is SHWZ Cron. Cron is next. Cron's had a nice little pullback to support level. You can see it right here where we've had this channel. I'm kind of liking this here, maybe for retracement. It does have a descending pattern, as you can see. Kind of pulls back. I'm thinking maybe right about in here. See where we've kind of had that pull back, and even that wick right there held it. Bam, bam, bam. So I think we're. This could be, it could be an inverse descending pattern to where it can bounce back up. But we did kind of break a, a, a support level right here, and I'm kind of, kind of concerns me a little bit on Cron. That's right in here at this level right here, where we had this this top. So I'm going to draw a couple trend lines for resistance kind of stay in the game that's 791 and then pull back support to get into the trade if it does knife on us I always like to look for the pullbacks and I'm thinking that should be a strong buy at 708 if it does decide to pull back and bounce back up I think we're at that position right now I do believe this is a pivot point a very serious place to be at 760 so if we don't pull back to that $7, $7.08 area, we can bounce to $7.60. Or we can just go ahead and start to retrace up and break this $7.91 resistance. I'm going to go ahead and draw my fibs on here just to see where we are from the, from the major breakout that we had. And that keeps us right in this channel. And that's where this channel was right in here too. So the resistance levels to break is $7.60. Solid support at $7.08. And if we can get break 760, 791, 831, then on up to these other resistance levels. Keep an eye on Cron next week. CGC, I kind of have mixed messages on, but I kind of like it too. We did have a nice little breakout. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Well, I'll leave it on there. We got a low support. I like to see hold right here, right around the 25, 27. We're going to draw a trend line on that right there. 25, 27. And then a lower channel support, no lower than this 23.72. I hate to see it go any lower than that. I do want to see that 25, 27 hold. Then we've got a resistance level to break. right around $27. Now we're going to draw one more in here. It's had a pretty nice little sell-off <coughs> here in the past couple of days. Right around $25.81. I like that. I like that a lot. Let me see. I'll put another trend line right here. That also has an automatic Fibonacci setup that you can use that I like to just kind of use, look at every once in a while, glance and see how my support levels are. With a hard resistance right up here, right around the 27. Bam. And then we got an equilibrium. So let's look at this trade. It's had a pretty nasty little sell off. A good dollar sell off from that 27 down to 25. So we got a low support. Ooh. So I want to draw a little trend line right in here, too. They're going to call this more solid down here. At the 25.15, if this 20. 581 does not hold. 
we can look at the 2515 or maybe bring it on down to this other level where we had the breakout and that's going to be the support level right at $25 so we'll change that kind of have a, a little space in here a little force field between 25 and 2527 with a resistance to break of 2643 2698 and 2732 now this are going to be swings that we're going to be looking at into next year they're not going to be day trade numbers they're going to be kind of swings here's another little one sspk had a huge breakout pulled back kind of have a cup and handle right here and i think we could be setting up to maybe retrace back up to this 1368 so we'll go ahead and put that right there 1369 with another resistance level right here right around the 13 if we can get past 1312 we'll take it to 1369 next year and then we'll have this double top up here right around the 1439 with a low 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 strong buy if it does pull back this is sspk this has all got to deal with the cannabis sector of 1211 that's what I need to see hold if not solid buy down here this lower support right around the 1186 and you got a pivot point or you got a, a, a support level that it's held here a couple times so we're going to go ahead and draw one more trend line this is it we got three support levels 1267 1117 uh, 1211 and then 1186 with resistance levels to break of 1312, 1369, and 1440. Every one of these calls go into 2021 long. X E D X C. Here's another one that we want to take a good look at. You see, it's had a nice little run, and it's also pulled back. Everything's pulled back. This and here's another uh, bearish candle, but every time it's pulled back to this support level we've bounced back up so maybe we can take this trade up to break resistance level and we're going to run it off the wicks right here right around the 13 13 cent this is a penny trade penny stock this is one that you know that has a lot of risk and a lot of gamble to it so if this support level holds right here at 11 cents we can take it back up to 13 and then if it gets any news, it'll pop up on up here to right around the 16 cent level. Keep a good eye on this one. That's EDXC. It's probably the lowest one on my list, but I'm gonna, I like to have throw in a couple of them little penny penny, micro penny ones and keep it on watch. EDXC. The next one is TANH. TANH. Another one that's had a real nasty sell off. I think, you know, it's gonna be hard to kind of kind of judge I this hurt a few people it's pulled back it had a nice little breakout and she's done nothing but just kind of pulled back ever since I did call this out and I figured it would start to reverse a couple weeks ago and it's done nothing but just gone straight down so I'm gonna keep this one on watch I think this one can be a nice little scalper tool if, if, if she starts to move T-A-N-H the next one is gonna be one of my favorite ones and it's had a wonderful run as you can tell She's run all the way down here from right around 15 bucks all the way up to 40, 42. That's a nice little gain in, in a matter of a couple of months. So we've got a low support. I'm going to keep a good eye on this. It has a bunch of good news coming out on it all the time. We're going to draw just a cup. We're going to draw a Fibonacci setup on this one here because it's had such a breakout. And I don't see that being any good to me. We're going to go ahead and remove that. Let's look at the auto one. That one stays in the channel a little bit better. This one I like a lot more. So we're going to go ahead and start drawing a few little trend lines in here. It needs to hold this support area right here, right around the 39, right around the $40 area. We could probably pull it. I mean, that's pretty good. Actually, 39.86. I like this little area right in here. For a solid support level I don't always like to use other uh, technical indicators my favorite one is my extended trend lines they're more accurate than anyone that I can find 
and then we're going to go ahead and draw another one right here because I always base my tr my trades on history and forecast. History repeats itself just like it does in real life and just like it does in Wall Street. Um, not a history major, but I sure do love history. Okay, this is looking good to me. I really like this trade. I think uh, GRW uh, needs to really hold this channel right here, right around the 39.85. If it does decide to pull back, that's going to be a strong buy at 39.85. And then you've got resistance levels to break. And I can see probably 42 right here, right around the 41.95 area. But let's go ahead and draw just another one in here. Let's go to the, I'm going to go to the minute. I think I need to kind of fine tune this one a little bit. Let's go to the 15, 30 minute. Thirty minute candle. It's kind of choppy, kind of choppy. Just kind of using my imagination here. I'll go back to the hour. I'll get a bit a little, the hour is a little bit more cleaner to look at, as you can tell. I'm going to stick with my thesis here. I like to see this 30, 38, 85, 88 area to hold. Your first support is going to be right down here at this level right in here off this trend line at right around 39.83. Then you've got the pivot point area. We did close right at 41.29, so that first support is going to be right here right around the 40.85. Resistance levels to break, 43.93, and then on up here to that 42.65. And I think that's it for today's lesson. We're talking about the cannabis stocks. Please be sure to subscribe. We do have a Twitter account over here. Please, we're up to 6,022. It just grows day by day. The videos are helping, bringing people's attention. Plus, Miss Vegas is constantly putting alerts in here. And that's a great, great place for information. Also, we do have links over here of our Stock Twits accounts, our YouTube channel. You can go back and look at previous uh, videos that we've done. And we wish everybody a great 2021. And I do believe the pot sector, the electric car sector, is going to be probably some of the hottest trades of the year. Also in the green sector, a lot of these green micro stocks, uh, Small caps are doing very well. Look at mergers into the EV car companies, same as what we're going to see into the uh, marijuana sector. I wish everybody a great day, and I love stocks.